For years, I've shopped for music online and in record stores. A store I've gone to often is McKay's in Greensboro, North Carolina. This place has everything. Video games, board games, movies, toys, instruments, music, and loads and loads of books. I want to show you some of my shopping habits in two trips. If I have anything I want to trade in, I give it to them before I even start looking through stuff. Sometimes it takes them an hour or so to go through everything I give them, and I could spend an hour or longer looking through the store. So they give me a number, and when mine is ready, it shows up on the screen. Time to get going. Often I'll go to a record store with a list of things that I'm looking for specifically, but I'm open to finding other things that I want. If I see anything that interests me even a little, I put it in the basket. Then when I'm ready to go, I'll pick out the stuff that I really want versus things I want to put back. It all depends on how much I want to spend. While on the topic of money, sometimes I'll have a budget in mind before going in. But I'm also keeping in mind that I'm going to get store credit later. That's why the basket is getting indiscriminately full, in case I get more than I expect. Sometimes stores will have metal sections, and other times the metal will be in the rock and pop section. And here there's Nile. What the fuck? <laughs> here I'm looking for the original classic Megadeth CDs, and I always check the row above and below the Megadeth space because sometimes people put them back in the wrong place. No peace cells today. If I look carefully in this O section, I might find obituary. And here's a seven dollar single. Like any store, some things you'll get a good deal on, other times it's overpriced. So I check prices online. Oasis Morning Glory for $1.95? Sounds good to me. Rush Grace Under Pressure? I can buy the remastered version for just as much, if not cheaper, brand new. So this is going back. I also have to keep age and price in mind. So if there's an album that doesn't look perfect but it's $3, depending on the album, I might be fine with it. It's rewarding to find a hard-to-find album for a reasonable price. This Judas Iscariot album is only $4? Perfect! A couple of memorable finds from this place were an autographed Guar CD and an autographed Marilyn Manson DVD. Sometimes people turn stuff in without realizing their value, or maybe they forgot it was autographed. I could make good money off of these if I wanted to, but not for sale. A personal rule if I'm buying used CDs is I always take them out of the case and look at them first. I've been burned a few times buying scratched CDs, so it's good to know what I'm getting. Of course, you don't want the store to think that you're stealing the discs. But with that in mind, you also have to check and make sure that the disc is in the case. If the store has two of the same album, I look at the discs and usually pick the one in better condition. I've seen people switching the discs, but again, you don't want the store to think that you're stealing. I once bought a Guns N' Roses album, brought it home, and a Boys to Men CD was inside. So yeah, check the discs. It's disappointing to find an album that you really want, and then you see the disc is either missing or badly scratched. When there's more than one version of an album or DVD here, like this Pink Floyd concert movie, I'll do a quick internet search to see which one is superior, price difference aside. What's fun about record and CD shopping is seeing the ridiculous album covers and band names. My morning jacket? What's next, my evening tuxedo? Uh... Washed out? With an artwork like that, I'm concerned over what I might find in the book. Here's a weird one. Fear Factory's demanufacturer with a sticker saying, as heard on the TV show, Friends. Yeah, this case was obviously switched out with another CD, but could you imagine seeing Friends with Fear Factory as the soundtrack? It's nice finding albums with cool packaging. Here's a red jewel case. Here's a purple jewel case. And here's this watchmaker album with a flat white back panel. If I'm shopping with a friend, we'll make commentaries on the stuff we find. In 1986, Huey released Four, which has their undisputed masterpiece, Hip To Be Square. Billy Idol's looking like, hey, I'm man candy. McKay's also has a section for very scratched CDs. They're dirt cheap, and sometimes good stuff is in there. So if you have something to resurface the discs, it's worth looking through. Occasionally, you can also find good stuff in the bargain shelves. My number has been called, and now I have some store credit. It's time to start picking and choosing the stuff in the basket. This is a bad place to go when you're on a budget, because they always have cool stuff that tempts you to go a little beyond it. Deciding what to go home with is hard when you really just WANT IT ALL! 
Sometimes I'll leave and think, oh, I should have gotten that extra CD, or oh, I forgot to look for this and that, but there's always next time. Once I'm home, it's time to rip the albums to the computer. I change out whatever jewel cases are broken. I'm also cataloging my albums as I'm putting them on the shelf. Sometimes it's important to reference this catalog when I'm shopping, just in case I forget what I have. These are some habits of mine when I'm shopping for albums pretty much anywhere. Even in resale shops, I can find one or two good albums in seas of garbage. I've even found Godflesh albums at Goodwill. McKay's, of course, is a great store. But on I go in the search for more music. Grind on. <laughs>